are all astronomers just daydreaming to be space cowboys, or are they making a real contribution to society? Let's examine seven little-known practical impacts to our lives that came from astronomy. I will give you a bonus contribution at the end for the soul-searching philosophers. Not millions, not billions, but trillions of beautiful and embarrassing moments are captured each year by our phones. The development of modern cameras started in 1969 when Willard Boyle and George Smith created charged coupled devices. In a CCD camera, pixels are represented by capacitors. This is allowing the conversion of incoming photons into electron charges. Until that point, astronomers were using photographic plates to capture light. In 2009, both inventors were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics, which comes with a $1 million check. And my grandmother said there are no money in physics. The first thing we do in a new place to show how much we are not addicted to our phones is to search for a local Wi-Fi network. The Australian radio astronomer Dr. John O'Sullivan and his colleagues are credited with inventing the Wi-Fi. They worked on an experiment to detect micro black holes which may have been created in the high-density environment of the early universe. Stephen Hawking showed us that black holes evaporate over time by releasing radiation due to the quantum effects near the event horizon. As the radiation temperature is inversely proportional to the black hole's mass, micro black holes are predicted to be larger emitters of radiation than more massive black holes. So just like in real life, the smaller you are, the louder you bark. In order to analyze the signal of evaporating black holes, Dr. John O'Sullivan created a technique for sharpening and improving picture clarity in radio astronomy images. It was patented and used later as the foundation of how Wi-Fi works. The radio astronomer and again a Nobel laureate, Martin Ryle, developed aperture synthesis. This is the process of combining data from multiple telescopes to produce a single image as if it was taken by a single telescope the size of the entire collection. Developing it led to the discovering of the Fourier analysis, which uses mathematical algorithms to discover clear pictures from noisy signals. For example, using both of them, the Event Horizon Telescope showed us the first image of a black hole. In medicine, those methods are applied to medical imaging to provide the clearest picture possible in tools like computerized tomography, magnetic resonance imaging and positron emission tomography. The mortal enemy of astronomers is the atmosphere. Here on Earth, ground-based telescopes need to compensate for atmospheric distortion and turbulence which distorts images and reduces resolution. Since the 50s, astronomers envisioned the creation of adaptive optics, but computer development in the 90s made it possible. An artificial star is created by using a powerful laser to excite sodium atoms in the upper atmosphere. By observing the light they emit, the computer calculates the atmospheric distortion and it applies real-time changes to a deformable mirror. In simple words, the form of the mirror is distorted opposite of the atmosphere and the light coming from the star is being ironed out to say. No more twinkle twinkle little star. This is not so much different than looking through the fluid field, constantly moving human eye. This method is being applied as fundamental principle for retinal imaging. It can track the progress of different conditions in the eyes of living patients. We cannot imagine our technological world working without the assistance of GPS satellites. Have you ever wondered how can they orbit tens of thousands of kilometers above our planet and still guarantee accurate positioning on the map down to the meter? GPS satellites rely on astronomical objects like quasars and distant galaxies to determine an absolute position in space relative to Earth. On the other hand, being so far from the mass of the planet and experiencing less gravity, time moves faster for them, because space-time is less curved as described by general relativity. The clocks for satellites 20,000 kilometers distant from us tick faster by about 45 microseconds per day. If left uncompensated by the engineers, it would cause navigational errors by about 10 kilometers per day. Thank you, Einstein. The ultraviolet light might be your worst enemy at the beach, but it is highly important for detecting ice and organic compounds in the thin atmospheres of other planets. For investigating the UV part of the spectrum, scientists have developed a device called Solar Blind Photocounter. 
It uses UV filter to count only the ultraviolet photons and ignore the rest of the signal coming from the light source. On Earth, solar blind photo counters have a military application. They are being used to detect ultraviolet photons coming from the exhaust of a missile without being overwhelmed by the particles coming from the sun. This system produces false free early detection, which eliminates the chances of starting World War III by mistake. Now, let's move to the gamma part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but don't expect any hope references. One of the most common instruments used to map different elements on the surface of Mars and the Moon is the gamma ray spectrometer. It was developed for the Odyssey spacecraft, which is orbiting the red planet since 2001. The space probe collected geological data for water in the surface layers of the Martian soil. This spectrometer detects gamma radiation, which consists of high-energy photons that penetrates matter very easily without destroying its structure. As the sample remains intact, this makes gamma ray spectrometers perfect for analyzing food, soil, air and water for radiation contamination coming from the environment. Recently, we have started using this instrument to probe for structural weaknesses in historical buildings or to look behind them fragile mosaics such as St. Mark's Basilica in Venice. As promised, we will end with something for the soul. The astronomer Carl Sagan gave us one of astronomy's simplest and most inspirational gifts to society in his book The Pale Blue Dot. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known.